Okay, greetings one and all and welcome to this math video. In this math video, we'll be considering the topic rounding. Yes, rounding. Let's begin. Okay, the question says approximate 704.7534 correct to the nearest whole number. Now, since they're asking us to approximate this number correct to the nearest whole number, we have to circle four because four is in the ones place. Then we look at the number that is in the that is to the right of four, which is seven, and we underline that number. Notice that seven is greater than um, five. So once the number is five or greater, we have to round up. And so we're gonna add one to four. Um, when we add one to four, that becomes five. So the answer is 705. Notice that we, we keep the two numbers in the front, seven and zero. Um, we change four to five because we add one. Um, all of the numbers to the back, we drop them. Uh, because we want it to be a whole number. So 705, that's a whole number. We remove all the decimal parts. So the answer is 705. They want us to approximate this number correct to the nearest 100. Um, the number that's in the hundreds place is definitely zero. And so we're going to circle zero, and then we're going to underline the number that is to the right of zero, which is four. Four is a less than five, so that means that we do not round up, and so it remains the same. So the four turns into zero, and we drop the decimal part. We drop the numbers that are to the right of the decimal point. So the answer is just going to be 700. Again, um, we keep seven and zero, but we drop, we keep seven and zero, and we um, turn this four into zero, and we drop the decimal part. So all the numbers to the right of, of all the numbers to the right of the decimal point, we drop them. So the answer is 700. Now they want us to approximate this number correct to the nearest two decimal places. The number that's in the second decimal place is going to be five. That's the number in the, in the hundredths place. So we circle that number and we underline the number that's to the right of five, which is three. Notice that three is less than five, so we do not round up. We just leave it the same. So we keep the seven, the zero, the four, the seven, and the five, but we drop the three and the four, all right? And so the answer is 704.75, and that's the correct answer for this one. Moving right along, let's move on to the next question. It says approximate the number 245.547, correct to um, one decimal place. The number that's in one decimal place or the number that's in the tenths place is going to be five. So we circle five and then we underline the number that's to the right of five, which is four. Four is a less than five, so we do not round up. That means that everything stays the same. We have two, four, five and five, that stays the same, and we drop the four and the seven. So the answer is 245.5. So we only want one decimal place, all right? Okay, the next one we have, we wanna approximate this number correct to the nearest whole number. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna circle the number that's in the ones place, which is five, right? And then we're gonna underline the number that's to the right of five, which is gonna be five again. Once the number is five or greater, we can, we're gonna round up. So we're gonna add one, to five, so five plus one becomes six. And so the answer is two, four, six. We drop the numbers that are to the right of the decimal point and we add one to five, giving us six, two, five, six. It has to be a whole number, no decimal parts. Okay, next we want to approximate this number correct to two significant figures. Um, notice that this number has one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. Once a number is not zero, it is significant. So all non-zero digits, all non-zero digits are significant. So two, four, five, five, four, and six, these are all significant figures. So there are six significant figures in this number, but they want us to round it, or they want us to write it correct to two significant figures. So the first significant figure would be two. The second significant figure would be four. So we have the circle four. And then we have to underline the number that's to the right of four, which is five, and then we say, okay, well, we have a number which is five, and, and once the number is, once it's, once it's five or greater, right, once the number is five or greater, we can round up, and so we're going to round up. That means we're going to add one to four. Now, four plus one is five, and so we have, we keep the two, all right, and we um, change the four into five, and then this five at the back becomes a zero, and we drop the decimal part. All right, so there are only now two significant figures inside of this um, new number, 250. The two and the five, they are the two significant figures. The zero is not significant in this number. All right, let's move on to the next question. We have 
515.779. It says write the above number, correct two, two significant figures. Now, if we look at this number, this number has six significant figures, five, one, five, seven, seven, and nine. These are all significant figures. Um, remember that all non-zero digits are significant. So once a number is not zero, it's sorry, once a digit is not zero, it's going to be significant. So five, one, five, seven, seven, nine are all significant because they're not zero. Now, five, so there are six significant figures. Five, one, five, seven, seven, and nine. There are six significant figures in this number, but they want us to round it to correct to, they want us to round it, they want, it, they want us to write this number correct to two significant figures. So five is the first significant figure and one is the second one. So we circle one. The number that's to the right of one is five. So we underline five. Once the number is five or greater, we're going to round up. So we're going to add one to one. And one plus one is definitely two. So we have two here. We keep the five in front and we put two. And then this five turns into zero. And so that means our new answer or our answer rather is 520. Um, we drop the decimal part. We only want to, um, we drop the decimal part. And so our answer is 520. There are only two significant figures in this number. The five is significant, the two is significant, but the zero is not significant. So it is written correct to two significant figures because there are only two significant figures in this number. Next, we want to write the above number correct to two decimal places, two decimal places. So um, notice that this is the, first number behind a decimal point, and this is the second number behind a decimal point. And so that number, which is seven, we're gonna circle it. Seven is in the hundredth place, and so we circle seven, and we underline the number that is to the right of seven, which is nine, right? Now, notice that nine is greater than five. Once the number is five or greater, we are going to round up. So we're gonna add one to seven, and seven plus one is definitely eight. And so we keep the numbers right on the front, five, one, five, we keep them, point seven, eight. So instead of writing seven again, we write eight because seven plus one is eight and we drop the nine. And so our our number is going to be, or our answer is gonna be 515.78. All right, now we wanna write this number correct to the nearest whole number. That means that we have to look at the number that is in the ones place. The number that's in the ones place is definitely five. And so we're going to look at the number that's to the right of five, which is seven, so we underlying seven. And so we say, okay, is seven greater than five or less than five? Indeed, seven is greater than five. And so that means that we're gonna round up, right? We're gonna round up. And so if we're gonna round up, that means that we're gonna add one to five. And so five plus one is definitely six. And so we have five, one, six, five, one, six. So the answer is 517 and 16. All right, we drop the numbers to the right of the decimal point. We don't want any decimal part. So 516 is our answer. Moving right along, we have a next question. It says round 723.173, correct two, two decimal places. Um, so one is the first number behind the decimal point. Seven is the second number behind the decimal point. So we're gonna circle seven because they want us to write it correct to two decimal places. Then we're gonna underline a number that's to the right of seven, which is three. Three is less than five. And so that means that we do not round up. We keep everything the same. So seven to three point one seven. We don't change the seven, but we do drop the three. And so the answer is seven to three point one seven. That's the answer. Now they say they want us to round this number correct to the nearest tenth. And so the tenth place is going to be this number, the first number behind a decimal point to the right. And so that's zero, so we circle zero. Then we underline the number that's to the right of zero, which is seven. Notice that seven is greater than five. Since seven is greater than five, we're gonna round up. And that means that we're gonna add one to one. Indeed, one plus one is two. And so that means that we're gonna have seven to three point two. Then we're gonna drop the seven and the three because we only wanna write it correct to the nearest tenth. And so it's seven to three point two. And we drop the numbers that are to the back. Next, we want to write this number correct to two significant figures. 
Currently, this number has six significant figures. Seven is, is significant, two is significant, three is significant, one is significant, seven is, is significant, and three is, is significant. So there are six significant figures in this number. Indeed, all non-zero digits are significant. So once the digit is not zero, it is significant. And so we have six significant figures, but we want to write it correct to two significant figures. Seven is the first significant figure. Two is the second significant figure. And so we are going to circle two, all right? And then we're gonna underline the number that's to the right of two, which is three. Three is less than five. And so that means that we do not round up. We keep it the same. So the two stays the same. So we have seven and two, that stays the same. But we're gonna turn the three into a zero and then we're gonna drop everything else. And so the answer is gonna be seven, two, zero, 720. All right, next we wanna write this number correct to the nearest whole number. Now, that means that we have to consider the ones place. So we're going to circle the numbers in the ones place, which is three. Then we're going to underline the number that's to the right of three, which is one. So we underline one. Now we're going to say, okay, is one less than five or greater than five? Indeed, one is less than five. So we have to round. So that means that we do not round up. Um, we keep it the same. We keep three the same. We do not change it. So it's going to be seven, two, three. Then we're gonna drop the decimal part. We're gonna drop the numbers that are to the right of the decimal point. And so the answer is 723. Next, we move on to the next question. It says round 62.978 to the nearest whole number. Okay, so that means that we have to circle the number that's in the ones place. The number that's in the ones place is definitely two. And then we underline the number that's to the right of two, which is nine. Indeed, nine is greater than five. Since nine is greater than five, that means that we're gonna round up. And so we have to add one to two. Two plus one is definitely three. And so our answer is 63. We drop the number, we drop the numbers to the right of the decimal point. We do not want any decimal parts. Okay, let's move on. The next question, it says express 43.721 correct to two decimal places. So seven is the number that is, is the first number behind the decimal point, and two is the second number behind the decimal point. So it's gonna be, we're gonna circle two. Then we're gonna underline one because one is to the right of two. And uh, notice that one is a less than five. Since one is less than five, that means that we do not round up, but we keep it the same. So we keep this two the same. We do not add one. So it's gonna be four, three point seven two, and we drop the one at the back. So our answer, our answer is 43.72. Next, we want to write this number correct to two significant figures. Now, in this number, we have 43.721. And that means that we have five significant figures because four is significant, three is significant, seven is, is significant, two is significant, and one is significant. So all of these numbers are significant figures. Indeed, once a number, or once a digit rather, once a digit is not zero, it's, it's, it is significant. So all non-zero digits are significant. And so four is the first significant number, three is the second so it's significant figure. And so that means that we're gonna circle three, and we're gonna underline seven, right? So we're gonna underline seven because it's to the right of three. Seven is greater than five. Since seven is greater than five, we're going to add a one to, um, we're gonna add one to three because we're rounding up. So three plus one is definitely four. So we have four, four, 44, and we drop the decimal parts. We drop the numbers that are to the right of the decimal point. Now, there are cases, I should mention this, there are cases when zero can be significant, um, but in general, all non-zero digits are significant. All right, um, let's move on to the next question. It says round, 3.463 to the nearest hundredth. Around 3.463 to the nearest hundred. Well, we have the circle six because six is in the hundredths place. This is the ones place, this is the tenths place, and six is in the hundredths place, and the three is in the thousandths place. So we circled six because that's the one that we have to place special consideration upon. We underline three. Notice that three is less than five. So since three is less than five, it stays the same. Um, so that means that, sorry, since three is less than five, that means that we do not round up. And so that means that the six stays the same. 
um, we don't change the six. So we have 3.46. We don't we don't add one to the six. It just remains as six. And we drop the three. So it's going to be 3.46. That's our answer. Move right along. We have a next question. It says round 5,684. Correct to the nearest 10. All right. So we have, what we have to do is we have to look for the number that's in the tens place, right? Four is in the ones place. Eight is in the tens place. And so we circle eight. And we underline the four because it's the number to the right of eight. Um, four is less than four is less than five, so that means that we cannot round up. So that means that eight stays the same. We do not add one to eight, so it's going to be five, six, eight, and we change the four to zero. So the answer is five thousand six hundred and eighty. Move right along. We have a next question. It says express zero point three zero six correct to the nearest hundredth. Now. Zero is in the ones place, three is in the tenth tenths place, zero is in the hundredths place, and six is in the thousandths place. We have the circle zero since we want to round to the nearest hundredth. And we know that we have to underline six because six is to the right of zero. Six is greater than five. Once the number is five or greater, we have to add one. We have to round up. And so we say zero plus one, and zero plus one is definitely um. 0 plus 1 is definitely 1. And so this answer is wrong. So let me um, change it. So it's not going to be 0 0.37. 0 point, so, so let's explain. So 6 is greater than 5. Once it's 5 or greater, once it's 5 or greater, we add 1. So it's going to be 0 plus 1. What is 0 plus 1? Well, 0 plus 1 is 1. So it's going to be 0 point. We keep the 0. We keep the 3. It's going to be 0 0.3. 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. So the answer is 0 0.31, not 0 0.37. The answer is 0 point, 0 0.31. 0 0.31. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Good. Oh, that's that's the last question. And so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.